prepare is Cheryl Nelson joining us now. She's a FEMA disaster preparedness instructor and a certified broadcast meteorologist. Thank you so much for joining us. So you've got quite the setup in front of you as we see the storm uh, moving in toward Florida right now and, and we're about to be in the heat of hurricane season. What should really people be preparing for and collecting right now? Alexa, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's so important because this is going to be a prolonged event. So it's really something that we have to start thinking about. So have that family communicated plan. Start talking to your family. Talk to your neighbors. Look around your house and look at things that you could do now. There might be trees that you could start trimming that are leaning over in your house. What about outdoor patio furniture? Start bringing stuff in or tying stuff down. Also, look at your important documents. Start gathering everything together and putting that on a flash drive. Fill up your gas tank in advance of the storm, too. And then make a list of important phone numbers. So maybe your power company, your electric company, your important contacts. Make a list of that because you might not have internet. There might be a lot of power outages to consider. We're looking for a lot of rain, as you just saw. That's going to saturate the ground, and it's not going to take much wind to take down trees and power lines. So you have to be prepared. And then, of course, you want that disaster kit. And of course, I feel like this anytime I go to the grocery store just to get stuff for dinner, but especially when preparing for something as important as a storm, it's probably tough to get everything you need in one shopping trip. Will you list off some of the essentials that you think people should put at the top of their list and something that you think people forget often that you want to remind them to put on their list? Yeah, it's stressful. I know it is because right now everybody in the path of this storm is probably going, oh my gosh, it's time to rush out to the stores. And where I am in Virginia, it's actually tax-free weekend for hurricane prep supplies. So a lot of people are going out. But the necessities that you need, bottled water, you want that clean water, at least one gallon per person in your family for at least three days, ideally up to two weeks. Also non-perishable food, like granola bars are good, canned goods are good, have that can opener with you as well. Flashlights and batteries are huge. I also think these portable power stations run off of batteries. These are amazing. It's a great alternative to a generator. You can run these inside because they don't use gasoline. A lot of them you can charge with solar panels as well, which is really cool to have. Medications, anything that you need for your health, you want those to be stocked up too. Those are the essentials, but got a lot more stuff here on this table. Yeah, will you walk us through some of those other supplies that you have in your hurricane prep kit that might be, you know, really helpful, especially if people are kind of stuck in a tough situation for a couple of days and this is kind of carrying on? Oh, yeah, because with this prolonged event, you might be flooded. You might not be able to go anywhere for days to a week, you know, if not longer in some of these areas. So NOAA weather radio is huge. This is how you're going to get your notifications, flash flood warnings, tornado warnings, for example, because we got to remember if you're in that northeast side of the storm. That's where the biggest threat for tornadoes are, especially in those outer bands. Other things you want. So you want your toiletries. You want chargeable battery packs that you can use to charge up your cell phone, for example. This is a bracelet you can put your medical information on on a flash drive. Always good to have with you. Flash drive, we talked about that with important documents. How about a whistle? If you get trapped or stuck somewhere, you want to draw attention. A whistle is a great way to do that. Emergency ponchos you might want. Also some tarps in case you do have a leak in your roof. That's something else to consider. The tools, you want your tools, your duct tape, your work gloves. And if we lose power, we're not going to have air conditioning. And we saw how horrible that was for our friends in Texas who went through hurricane barrels. So any kind of fan, a portable fan, battery powered, anything that you have to help you stay cool is important. Maps, you gotta think of that, GPS might not work. Cash and single dollar bills. And of course, Very don't important. forget your pets and your kids. You want items for them as well. Make yes. sure your pets also have identification and are vaccinated. Love it. This is all great advice. Cheryl Nelson, FEMA disaster preparedness instructor. Thank you so much for your time. We welcome now meteorologist and disaster preparedness expert Cheryl Nelson to talk more about this storm. Cheryl, thank you for being here. You know, we're seeing these images. They look desperate. Uh, certainly not good, uh, not great for travel. And it looks difficult for people to navigate this area in any way. Where's Debbie right now? Where is it headed? 
Kelly, thanks so much for having me. Yes, so Debbie came ashore this morning as a Category 1 hurricane. Right now, Debbie is a tropical storm at 70 miles an hour. The latest update from the National Hurricane Center at 11 a.m. puts Debbie about 35 miles west of Lake City, Florida. It's slowed to a movement of north-northeast at 8 miles an hour. It's going to continue on that track and then turn slightly to the east and then start to cut off from the upper-level steering flow. What that's going to do is basically make it stall out. So it's going to move off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina sometime tomorrow afternoon and then kind of linger there, maybe coming back ashore as we get into Wednesday, Thursday, and eventually make it up the coast into North Carolina and Virginia by the weekend. But the prolonged event, look at all of that rain on the radar image there, that northeast quadrant of the storm. That is the worst part of the storm to be in. That's where you have that strongest counterclockwise circulation. You get the strongest winds there, the most storm surge there, and also some of the heavier rains. Notice those tentacle-like bands coming down, streaming in across the Tampa area, Fort Myers area of Florida. We have so much Gulf moisture to work with that even though the center of the storm has moved off to the north of the Tampa St. Pete area, we're still seeing that training rainfall band after band coming through and moving across that region, still causing some flooding. They've seen 8 to 12 inches of rain across that portion of the state already. Wow. So we unfortunately already reported on one death. How mm. powerful, Cheryl, is a storm? What are the risks for people in its path? Yeah, and it's so unfortunate to hear that. And we really have to remember that the Saffir Simpson hurricane scale focuses on wind only, okay? So yes, this is a tropical storm right now, but the impacts can be just as deadly because that Saffir Simpson scale does not take into effect rainfall, storm surge, it doesn't look at that. So you have to focus on every storm as an individual storm with its own impacts. This is a large system. And when you get this much rain, you know what it does? It saturates the ground and it doesn't take much wind at all to take down those trees, to knock down power lines. And that's gonna be another threat because with all that flood water that we're going to have, we have to remember, you don't wanna wade out into that because inside the flood water, could be debris, could be bacteria, could be sharp objects, creatures like snakes, could be some active power lines as well. So that could be deadly. And then you see people driving through it and I'm going, no, because it takes just six inches of water to reach the bottom of most passenger vehicles. 12 inches of water can float a vehicle and then 18 to 24 inches of water, fast moving water can start to carry a vehicle away. To put things in perspective, storm surge is another big issue. What is storm surge is, is it's water pushed by wind where it normally is not, it's not supposed to be there. And when you have fast moving water at say 10 miles an hour, that is equivalent to a wind force of 270 miles an hour. That's how deadly and destructive storm surge can be. So that's why when we say, hey, look guys, we're looking at two to four feet of storm surge along the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. This is important. That's something you have to take seriously and don't go out and start driving and trying to escape once that water starts to come in. By that point, it's too late. By that point, you got to hunker down. You know, that is great advice and really important context. We appreciate that, Cheryl. Um, what can people who are in areas that haven't felt the impacts yet, what can they do to best prepare? We only have about 60 seconds left. Yeah, um, at this point, I really think that preparation should be nearing completion. But really, right, what you want to do now is the outdoor furniture, the patio furniture, anything that could float or fly away, tie that down, bring that in. If you have sandbags, this might be the time to throw some of those out there. Be prepared for leaks. I know a lot of my friends and family in Florida, they have roof leaks. So now they had to find their buckets and their tarps and they're dealing with that. Get that stuff ready. Make sure you have a NOAA weather radio to receive notifications like tornado warnings when you have active tornado watches out there right now your disaster prep kit have everything you need hopefully you have some backup power sources a generator remember never ever run a gas generator
outside. Never run it in a garage. Gas generators cannot be near vents. You don't want to have carbon monoxide poisoning. Get all of that stuff ready as the storm continues. Because again, this is going to be a prolonged event. Just because it's a tropical storm does not mean it's not going to be catastrophic. There could be historic flooding, 20 inches, even close to 30 in some isolated areas. Charleston, Savannah, those areas in particular, I'm very concerned about. All right. Great information to be armed with. Cheryl Nelson, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Kelly.